Hello crafty friends, in today's video I'm going to show you how I created this index card. It's quite experimental, I did a couple of things that I've been wanting to try for a while and using some techniques that I really haven't used before. I'm not extremely happy with the outcome, it was quite a long process which I wasn't quite happy with but like I've said before I like to show you everything that I create so here it is and if you'd like to be inspired or learn something I hope you do. I have a quite a bunch of stickers that I left over from my days of scrapbooking that I thought I wanted to use somehow in my art journaling or in my index cards or full deck challenge. So I thought I'm going to use them as a texture in the background. So I'm starting by sticking just randomly different stickers onto the index card and I'm hoping this will create some kind of texture that will pop through from the background. You'll see me changing between one and two cards and then one card again. The idea was to create two cards and at one point I thought, okay, I'm just going to create one and then I went back to two and then only the one worked. So it's a bit of a learning process, quite trial and error. So do bear with me. I do film everything that I create, so you do see the good, the bad and the ugly. You really could use any stickers for these. These are obviously just letter ones and difficult to see in the video, but they actually have like a text print on them. They're quite vintagey, and I do actually have two sheets of them. So I thought, let me get stuck in and start using these and see if I can use them in some kind of a project. I'm going to do each card slightly different. So for this one, I'm going to add a bit of gesso over the letters and on some of the background of the index card, just to try and blend that in and create a surface for the ink that I'm going to add later. For the second card, I'm going to add the gesso after. So I'm just really testing and trying to see which way will work best. I'm going to use my Distress Oxide Sprays by Tim Holtz. I'm starting with the colors Vintage Photo, Tea Dye and Brushed Corduroy. And I'm going to spray. I don't normally spray. I normally do the smooshing technique. So I thought for once I'm going to try and do the spraying and see how that works for me. So I've just placed it into a high sided box and I'm just spraying the different colours over both cards. Now I did quite a lot of spraying so the ink is quite thick and quite wet so I want to try and remove some of that but I'm going to press another index card over the top so I don't waste the ink. And then as I press the first one, as I turn it over I thought wow that turned out really nice. It actually stamped the letters that I had put in the background as a design and I really like the way that turned out. I'll keep those for a future project. Now you can clearly see the difference on the right hand side the card had the gesso first and it's much lighter than the one on the left that had no gesso. I'm now just going to splash some water with my paintbrush over both cards, leave it for a few seconds and then just dab up the moisture with a tissue. This creates some really beautiful designs in the oxide ink. I'm then going to dry both cards really well. The next step is I'm going to apply the gesso now on the card that never had the gesso to start off with. So I'm applying now the gesso on top of the ink. As I was saying, I'm going to try different ways of applying the different mediums at different stages of the process. The gesso doesn't stay totally white because it blends with the background ink, which is fine. I think it gives it a very nice vintage and rusty kind of look. And because I love my gesso and I love contrast, I'm adding a bit more white gesso onto the card that already had the gesso. So the original plan is already gone, but that's okay. I do like white contrast, so I'm trying to lighten that one up a bit more. You'll hear the word contrast a lot in my videos. I like to create a balance between light and dark. So for these cards, I feel that the colors are looking quite flat. So to apply contrast and to give it a balance, I'm going to do some black splatter. I'm just using watered down acrylic paint and a paintbrush and just randomly splattering over both cards. Once the black splatter is dry, I'm going to also apply white splatter. Same technique and using white acrylic paint that has been watered down. Now with the acrylic paint, depending how watered down it is, it doesn't always stay pure white, especially with the oxide inks in the background. They do react 
with the white paint and do pick up some of the color so the white splatter does dull down a bit if you wanted to be pure white you could also use liquid white out or just make your white paint a little thicker I'm going to add a bit more ink. I'm finding that the spraying of the ink has just caused the background to be quite flat. I want it to be a bit more dimensional. So I'm adding a little bit of ink directly onto the card and then spraying it with some water and just letting it sort of move around the page and create some designs. Now I really loved the way this looked. I loved the, the brightness of the ink, but as it started drying, it sort of just got absorbed into the background and it lost that vividness which really was disappointing for me because I wanted it to look like this when it was dry. But for some reason, due to all the layers of ink and dress that I've used, it is just not staying on top of the paper. Again, we're experimenting, so that's okay. But lesson learned, maybe I'll just stick to my smooshing technique where the colors are bright and vivid the way I like them. So I keep adding a few more layers, but the same thing happens. And this is where I realized that I'm not really happy with these cards because they're not looking how I imagined them. But I will continue on and finish them so we can just see what it'll look like as a finished product. I dried them both really well and then decided to carry on and use the one on the right. It had that darker splotch in the middle, which I liked. And I thought, let's just see what we can do with this. And here I go again, trying to add some more ink. I don't give up easily, do I? So I'm not going to go ahead and embellish this card. I think the background is done. It's been overworked and it is what it is. So I've decided to use some mushrooms as my focal points. These are printables from the Digital Collage Club. I will put a link to the website below. And if you use my links, there are codes that you can get a discount. I'm just going to work on making a layered embellishment. I'm going to put different layers underneath to be able to build up on the focal point. These papers that I'm using are from Topology. I will put a link in the description below. There is also a discount code if you use my links. The idea is just to build layers underneath to make depth for the focal point. Sometimes you can place items down and it works straight away. Other times you can sit for 30 minutes moving pieces around until you get a good balance and you're happy with the composition. I always love adding a little bit of cheesecloth underneath my focal points or my laid embellishments. I think it creates great texture. I'm going to add a little bit of this washi tape, also from Topology, just for some added interest. I'm cutting down this little sticker to fit better and just putting a black frame around it using a black watercolor pencil. Once you're happy with the composition of your layered embellishment, you need to just stick everything down. I'm just going to use some craft glue. You can also use um, hot glue or even double-sided tape for the paper elements. Thank you. 
When sticking down vellum, if you use a wet glue like a craft glue or even a glue stick, the vellum does tend to curl up. If you don't want that to happen, I would suggest using double-sided tape. I don't mind if it's curling up and I'm also sticking my mushrooms on top, so that's okay for me, but do be wary that it can curl up. I'm just softening the letters on the washi tape a little bit. I'm feeling they're a little bit too bold on their own. So just adding a little bit of gesso with my finger. I'm now going to create an edge all the way around just using my black watercolor pencil. I dip the point of the pencil in some water and then just go all the way around the card and use my finger to smudge it along. We don't want really a straight uniform line, we want it a little bit ragged and uneven. And then I always like to create little tabs for my index cards, just all different kinds. So this one, I'm just going to do a really simple one. I'm using the same script paper as I did for behind my mushroom. And then I'm just stapling it on with two staples on the right hand side. I've put it on the right hand side just to balance out the mushroom section, which is quite layered and quite um, intense. I've also added a staple just next to the mushroom just to balance out the staples on the right hand side. I'm going to add a little bit more white splatter over the entire card just to lighten everything up a little bit. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video as I experimented with my different techniques. I hope you were inspired to create your own and maybe you learned something. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the little bell to be notified every time I upload new content and I'll see you again soon. Bye.